This presentation introduces ideas about electronegativity and polar bonds. By the end of the presentation, you should know a technical definition for electronegativity. You should also have memorized some simple differences in electronegativity between the atoms that we come across most commonly in our study of organic chemistry. And then you should be able to use this knowledge to decide for a bond in a molecule whether it's polar or nonpolar, and mark on any relevant delta plus or delta minus charges correctly. Some molecules, such as the methane shown on the left here, do not have permanent partial charges on the molecule. Other molecules, such as the water on the right, do have these permanent partial charges, shown here as the delta minus on the oxygen and the delta pluses on the hydrogen. Electronegativity allows us to predict and explain the presence or absence of these partial charges. Let's look at what we mean by electronegativity. The definition of electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract the electrons in a covalent bond towards itself. Let's explore what that means with an example. Take for example the substance hydrogen fluoride, HF. Between the hydrogen and fluorine atoms in an HF molecule there's a covalent bond, which means of course a shared pair of electrons. We could represent that like this with a cross and a dot. Now it turns out that the fluorine is significantly more electronegative than the hydrogen. If we go back to the definition, that means that the fluorine has a stronger tendency to attract the electrons in a covalent bond towards itself than hydrogen does. As a result, it would be more accurate to draw our shared pair of electrons something like this, with the electrons much closer to the fluorine than to the hydrogen. The result of this is that fluorine has, to a certain extent, gained an electron from the hydrogen, giving it a partial negative charge. Likewise, the hydrogen has, to some extent, lost its electron to the fluorine, giving it a partial positive charge. This is now said to be a polar bond, or to have a permanent dipole. Of course, this leaves the question of how you know whether one atom in a covalent bond is more or less electronegative than the other atom. This image shows how electronegativity varies within the periodic table. You can see that electronegativity increases towards the top right of the periodic table, as long as you ignore group 8, the noble gases, not shown here. And that means that fluorine is the most electronegative of the elements. Next to fluorine, nitrogen, oxygen and chlorine can also be seen to be quite strongly electronegative. Before you get nervous, don't worry, you don't need to memorize any of these values specifically. What you will need to remember is that both carbon and hydrogen are not very electronegative, whereas nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine and bromine, to some extent, are more electronegative. So for the atoms that interest us in our study of organic chemistry, we can kind of divide them into two categories simply, those with a lower electronegativity and those with a higher electronegativity. So in our category with higher electronegativity we have fluorine, the most electronegative element. We also have nitrogen and oxygen, very significantly electronegative. We have chlorine and we have bromine. 
In our category of atoms with lower electronegativity, we place carbon and hydrogen. So you will need to be able to recall from memory these two categories and the atoms in them. Our knowledge of electronegativity now should make it possible for us to decide whether a covalent bond is polar or non-polar. We'll go through the selection here one by one. See if you can decide for yourself whether it'll be a polar bond or a non-polar bond from what we've said so far. We'll start with the CC bond. Now in this case the two atoms in the bond are the same as each other. This means it's impossible for there to be a significant difference in electronegativity and so the electrons in the bond are going to be equally shared. No delta minus or delta plus in this case. A non-polar molecule. Next we'll look at the Br to C bond. In this case the bromine is significantly more electronegative than the carbon. This means the pair of electrons in the bond will be pulled closer to the bromine giving it the delta minus charge and the carbon the delta plus charge. So the carbon bromine bond is a polar bond. Next, the double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Whether it's a single or a double bond doesn't actually affect the decision you need to make here. You just look at the atom at each end. We know that oxygen is significantly more electronegative than carbon. This means the electrons in the bond will be pulled closer to the oxygen than the carbon, giving the oxygen a delta minus charge and the carbon a delta plus charge. So whichever atom is m significantly more electronegative will have the electrons in the bond closer to it and will have a delta minus charge. Whichever atom is significantly less electronegative will have the electrons in the bond pulled away from it and will have the delta plus charge. Now the CH bond. Here the two atoms have very similar electronegativity. This means that there isn't the significant difference in electronegativity needed and the electrons in the bond will be fairly equally shared. No delta plus or delta minus in this case. A non-polar bond. Finally, the fluorine-fluorine bond. Now this one has an easy trap to fall into, which is that you remember that fluorine is very electronegative. So you think something exciting must be going on here. However, we've got two identical atoms in the bond. So it doesn't really matter what they are. If they're identical to each other, you can't have a significant difference in electronegativity. So the electrons in the bond will be fairly equally shared. And we won't have the delta plus or delta minus charges. This is a non-polar bond. We can now use these skills in the context of a whole molecule, like the one shown here. If we look at this molecule, we can see lots of cases where you've got hydrogens attached to carbons, or carbons to other carbons. And we can simply all ignore all of these bonds. Remember, both carbon and hydrogen fall into our category of having a relatively low electronegativity, similar to each other. And so the electrons in those bonds will be equally shared. They're non-polar bonds. However, we do have some interesting cases where a more electronegative atom, oxygen or chlorine in this case, is attached to a less electronegative atom, such as carbon or hydrogen. These will give us our polar bonds. Starting over from the left, we have a carbon attached to a chlorine. The chlorine is more electronegative than the carbon, and so it'll get the delta minus charge and the carbon the delta plus charge. Now it's very important to note here, the presence of the delta plus on the carbon does not have any knock-on effect for the bonds around it, as far as we're concerned. We'll only consider one bond at a time. That's all you ever need to do 
Moving on across the molecule, we come to the carbon with the double bond to the oxygen. Again, the oxygen here is more electronegative than the carbon, so it'll get the delta minus charge because it pulls the electrons in the bond close to it. And the carbon, the delta plus charge, because the electrons are being pulled away from it by the more electronegative oxygen. We've also got the single bond between a carbon and an oxygen. And we can look at this and see again the, elect the oxygen is more electronegative, so it'll be delta minus. The carbon, less electronegative, delta plus. And we've already drawn that on. Finally, we've got the bond from the oxygen to the hydrogen. Oxygen is significantly more electronegative than hydrogen, so it'll be delta minus and the hydrogen delta plus. So when you get a whole molecule like this, you go through the bonds one by one, looking at the two atoms involved, thinking, is there a significant difference in electronegativity, and writing on the partial charges that result. You don't need to worry about one bond having an effect on a neighbouring bond. Finally, a question. Two molecules, Cl2 and HCl. For each one, decide is it a polar molecule or a non-polar molecule. Mark on any relevant delta plus and delta minus charges and explain your reasoning.